Let's begin this morning with a story that's extremely consequential for the entire country. The Indian Health Ministry has now lifted a ban on the retail sale of a life-saving drug known as oxytocin, a key drug used often after childbirth to treat bleeding and keep a check on maternal mortality. However, the center has retained the monopoly of the domestic drug companies manufacturing oxytocin. It has been moved from Schedule H to Schedule H1 drug, which allows retailers to sell the drug by maintaining records of the prescriber and the dosage. Earlier, the center had announced a ban from the month of September onwards following complaints of rampant misuse of this drug. But now they have made changes to the earlier notification. Okay, let's go across now to my colleague Sanjana Chauhan, who joins us live on the show this morning. Good morning, Sanjana. Uh, explain to our viewers, first of all, what are these new guidelines, these new curbs that have been put, even as the government has, to an extent, relaxed some of the guidelines for the sale of oxytocin? Right, uh, so let's just try and understand what the initial notification was. The initial notification was issued sometime in April that basically said that there would be a ban, a complete ban on the import, the sale, the production and the manufacturing of oxytocin in the country. It said that uh, the responsibility of all of this would lie only with one company alone, which would be a, a Karnataka pharmaceutical company, which is a PSU. So obviously there was a lot of, uh, it spread a lot of panic, a lot of doctors were very concerned about this because let's remember oxytocin is a life-saving drug. It is needed for women um, when they are going through childbirth, if there are any kind of complications, oxytocin is the thing that comes to their rescue. So what has essentially happened is that after panic has spread, uh, the government now uh, doing a turnaround and issuing an amendment to this notification uh, that came on Tuesday. Okay. So that basically, uh, basically now what has happened is that the government has uh, now said that private chemists can, can sell oxygen. Hi, joining us uh, on the broadcast this morning. Good morning, Dr. Desai. Uh, help us understand at this stage the uh, turnaround that has happened. First, there was a complete ban. Now, it's uh, the ban has been lifted with a rider. But in terms of implications, in terms of what it means for the consumer, okay, I'm told that uh, Dr. Desai is not on the line yet. We're trying to get uh, more inputs from the medical fraternity on this particular drug that is making news this morning because of uh, the way the government is handling the situation first imposing a complete ban and now the health ministry has lifted the ban on the retail sale of oxytocin with certain regulations with certain uh, riders so to speak Viren? right and uh, one thing that certainly caused a lot of concern is the fact that it was only going to be uh, this karnataka pharmaceutical uh, industries limited which is a government and owned enterprise which is supposed to be the only manufacturer of oxytocin across the country. That led to serious uh, questions about whether they would actually be able to keep up with the mm -hmm. demand. Now, the problem with uh, we, uh, the reason, the justification that the government offered for banning this, uh, the private sale and manufacture of the drug uh, as for the government was the fact that it was being misused in the mm -hmm. dairy industry in particular. But what about uh, the thousands, if not millions of people, women in particular, women in fact only, who yes. actually use this drug for whom this is a life-saving drug. One cannot overstate how important this is. Absolutely. And perhaps there was a realization there that a complete uh, ban is not advisable, would not be good for the women citizens. Sanjana, uh, you know, like Virain said, there were reasons why the government contemplated on a complete ban. And then it uh, revised that particular decision. Now, uh, take us through uh, the, the kind of uh, you know, regulations that the government has imposed now to restrict the misuse. That was the primary concern to begin with. Absolutely, Afrida. What the government was fearing is that this, this was being misused on livestock. They were seeing uh, a lot of um, you know, livestock being injected with oxytocin because let's remember it is a hormone. It is a hormone that, um, uh, that you know, it kind of uh, enlarges you and uh, it, it is uh, a boosting hormone. So that is the fear and that's essentially why uh, there was this blanket ban on the import, the selling, the production and manufacture of oxytocin. But what's happened now is that because there was a lot of panic, there was a lot of panic among doctors, there was a lot of panic among the medical industry. Uh, we have been uh, reporting extensively on how there's been crackdowns recently on people who've been hoarding um, oxytocin. So because of that, the government now decided to do a turnaround. And on Tuesday, what the government essentially has done, it's made an amendment to the notification that it yes. issued in April. What the government has now said is that you can, uh, private chemists can sell oxytocin. But 
it is very important here to note that there is nothing that's been mentioned about the import nothing that has been mentioned about the production nothing that has been mentioned about the manufacturing so let's remember that while a private chemist can continue to sell oxytocin the person that manufactures and, prod and produces okay. oxytocin is still only one company Right. Uh, in fact, so, Arjuna, stay with us. I've got Dr. Sejal Desai, uh, who's a well-known gynecologist. She's, join, she's back with us on the phone line. Uh, Dr. Desai, thanks for joining us uh, here on Mirana this morning. Uh, you know, this is a drug perhaps that you yourself have prescribed to a number of your patients. Uh, explain to us why you think it was vital and, uh, you know, why there was such widespread panic in the medical fraternity in particular after the government came out with these uh, rather stringent measures uh, to curb the sale of oxytocin. I think uh, the drug is not only vital, it is extremely vital when we are talking about uh, an obstetrician. I think it's a life-saving drug for millions and millions of women. We know today that the maternal mortality rates in India are still very high and the maximum cause of this is still hemorrhage. So I think this drug is extremely vital. As a doctor, we need it for induction of labor. We need it to prevent hemorrhage. And we all panicked when we realized that maybe only one company is going to give it and it's not going to be available in retail. It's an absolute life-saving drug for us. Right. So, you know, in terms of the fact that the government has now decided to revise the decision, are you happy with the kind of uh, regulations that are now imposed? Because now the government says the chemist will have to take certain precautions to maintain records. Do you think that helps in terms of at least weeding out the concerns of misuse, etc.? Yes, I think uh, I'm very happy uh, about what the government has decided today for the simple reason that we need oxytocin to be available in any emergency situation hmm. anywhere in the country. So I'm very happy about that. One more thing that they've done is they've made it a Schedule H1 drug wherein you need a prescription to provide it. I think that is also very, very important and that's going to help decrease hopefully the misuse of oxytocin. So I think that's a very good thing. The only thing that really bothers is that they've said one company is going to provide it and whether they have enough infrastructure and reach to provide it to the whole country is questionable. Uh, Dr. Desai, uh, so using what you're saying about the H1 bit is, is something that we wanted to clarify here because in the case of those under H1, uh, which is a, a schedule that was introduced, let's remember in 2013 to kind of prevent the misuse uh, of third and fourth generation antibiotics, uh, the retailer obviously has to maintain uh, you know, separate details that has the name and the address of the prescriber, uh, the patient, the drug and the quantity supplied. So isn't, isn't that something that would also also be infringing on some kind of uh, privacy say of, of women do, do you feel that no I don't think so I don't think so at all I think that ultimately it is only the gynecologist by and large who does prescribe oxytocin and it is done as a life-saving measure so why would it impinge on the uh, privacy not at all I think it's a good thing they should be available under prescription so other people cannot misuse it Right. Uh, Dr. Sejal Desai, uh, thanks so much for joining us, sharing your perspective and expertise on the subject. Uh, she's someone, of course, uh, who has prescribed the drug herself, so she knows what she's talking about and how it affects uh, women hmm. up and down the country, no matter where they are. Thanks, Anjana, as well, for bringing us up to speed with all the details.